Hello, everyone, and welcome to French Guiana for the 105th flight of an Ariane 5, the third Ariane 5 of 2019. Today, our launcher will be launching an American satellite, uh, Intelsat 39, and a European satellite, EDRSC. Thank you for being with us here. I'm glad to be here. H0 is at uh, 4.30 p.m. in Guyana. 3.30 in Washington and 9.30 p.m. in Toulouse and Washington. These are the 608th and 609th satellites launched by Ariane Space. And I'm speaking to you from the terrace at the Jupiter Center. The launch zone is straight ahead of me, 14 kilometers from where I am. This is our heaviest launcher. And from our position of 5.3 degrees north, uh, we benefit from the so called slingshot effect. So we're going to have a look at the launcher here. It measures 51.3 meters high, 775.3 tons of mass at liftoff, and the performance of this launch will be 10,671 kilos with a thrust at liftoff of 13,000 newtons. We're going to go under the fairing to look at our two passengers. And the upper berth, the first that will be separated, is Intelsat 39 with a mass of 6,000. 600 kilos, and in the lower position, EDRSC with a mass of 3,186 kilos. You can choose between the French version or English version for our listeners. And we're going to go inside to join my colleague Joshua Jampol. Joshua is going to be commenting in English. There are helicopters that are flying over my head here. He's two stories below me in the fishbowl. And he will speak to you in English. Josh, over to you. I can hear you, Pierre, of course. Greetings to everybody. We are coming to you live, as always, from inside the Jupiter Mission Control Building here. It's the heart of the action, the center of the nerve center of the space base. Like an airport control tower, really. The room is in two parts. On this side, we're with uh, our invited guests and our customers seating about, <clears throat> pardon me, 250. If you look behind us through the glass down into what they call the fishbowl, you can see the operational teams today, 50, 60 people, depending on the mission, working there. If you look farther back, all the way to the wall, you can see on the screens a lot of information uh, coming in. I know it's hard to read all of it, but we'll get to it, try to explain some of it. The uh, space base here covers a lot of ground, 700 square kilometers, about the size of Singapore, and all the outposts are sending their their information here into the space space, so uh, Jupiter well deserving of its name as the nerve center. Now, we are very happy to have with us Ariane Space uh, Vice President for Missions, Operations and Purchasing, Luce Fabriguet. I've got a date with her over here, so come on, you can meet her. Hello, Luce. Hello, Josh. How are you? Fine, thanks. All right, we won't keep you too long, just a couple of questions. Flight 249 tonight is the seventh launch of the year for Ariane Space. What makes it special? Our customers make it very special to, uh, today. We, we are going to launch for Intelsat and Airbus, two long-standing uh, customers for Ariane Space. So let me first uh, welcome them here at Jupiter Center and all our guests here at Jupiter and uh, all of you watching the live stream. Now, you mentioned long-standing uh, faithful customers. How, long, how, back, how far back does the partnership go? Uh, for decades, uh, with Intelsat, we have launched the first satellite uh, for them in 1983. And uh, today, we are going to launch Intelsat 39. And uh, Intelsat 39 will replace Intelsat 902 that was launched from here 18 years ago in August 2001. Mm -hmm. Regarding uh, EDRS, we are going to launch for uh, our customer Airbus, and with Airbus, we have launched more than 130 satellites already, and uh, EDRS is a very important mission for us. It's a key mission for us to 
guarantee the European access to space, and today EDRS will be will contribute to the the space data highway, and this is an important uh, important highway, new highway uh, to accelerate the transfer of data from a low Earth orbit satellite to the ground to all of us. Very good. Okay, can you describe the mission a bit further? Give us maybe some facts and figures, some numbers people can remember. So today we target to launch at 4:30 p.m. The launch vehicle we head towards the east. We will have, it will fly over the ocean Atlantic, then over Africa, and we will separate the first satellite, the, the large one, at, uh, after 29 minutes of launch. And then we will, uh, satellite, we will uh, separate the second one, EDRSC, around four minutes later. Uh, the satellites are going into geostationary transfer orbit, right? Is that, what right. exactly is that? It's very efficient orbit to reach the ge geostationary arc. We will uh, separate both of them on this elliptic orbit. It's an elliptic orbit with a perigee at 250 kilometers. Uh, apogee at the altitude of the geostationary arc, close to 36,000 kilometers. And mm -hmm. we will inject them with a huge speed, close to nine kilometers per second. Okay, very good. I know you want to go to work. You're going to work right in here. Just stay with us 30 seconds because I need you. You're going right in there, which is what we call the Air and Space Flight Desk. We're going to see mm. some shots of the colleagues uh, that you're going to be sitting with, the Roland Lager and others. What's the role of the flight desk? So here we are connected with all the teams here in Jupiter and also in the control, in the control centers. We fully rely on these teams and we have the final say on the decision to launch. Okay, final say, Luz Fabregat, you better get back to work. Thank you so much. We'll be back with Luz at the end uh, of the broadcast. For now, thousands of people from across Europe are working on a Europe's space effort. For more on that, we go back outside to Pierre. Yes, the uh, CVA, uh, the community of area and cities, has 15 cities, Augsburg, Bordeaux, Bremen, Cannes, Charleroi, Colleferro, Evry, Cocorone, Lampotsos and Kourou, Les Mureaux, Liège, Mulhouse, Seville, Toulouse and Vernon. And this community also includes three space agencies and 18 industrial sites. They play, uh, their main role is to inform the citizens of Europe about uh, the European space programs, about technological advances and the economic and technological uh, repercussions. And they also have to prepare uh, the future. They organize uh, seminars and summer schools and they try to incite young people to follow in the footsteps of Thomas Pesquet and to take up the torch. Uh, follow on the steps of their elders and work uh, to, they uh, were going to see a film now about Vernon. Ce soir, nous sommes réunis pour le troisième lancement Ariane de cette année avec un lanceur qui va porter haut les couleurs de notre ville de Vernon. Vernon s'investit dans la communauté des villes Ariane avec un support très actif de conseillers municipaux passionnés d'espace et de son histoire. Ce symbole de la ville, ainsi emporté vers l'espace, rappelle l'attachement historique de Vernon à son activité spatiale. 75 ans de présence et d'histoire sur le plateau de l'espace, 40 ans de vol Ariane depuis 1979. C'est pour cela que l'établissement Ariane Group de Vernon s'engage aux côtés de la municipalité et des établissements d'enseignement dans des actions visant la découverte de nos produits et de nos métiers. Aujourd'hui, avec l'ensemble des Vernonnais, et la communauté des villes Ariane, nous sommes heureux de parrainer ce vol d'Ariane 5 en apposant le blason de la ville de Vernon sur la coiffe de la fusée. Véronique, Vesta, Vulcain, Vinci, le V de Vernon a toujours été associé à l'aventure spatiale. Et depuis quelques années, avec Sébastien Lecornu, ce site a été transformé en véritable campus de l'espace avec bon nombre de grandes entreprises. Aujourd'hui, avec tous les Vernonnais, nous sommes très fiers de nous envoler avec Ariane 5. Vernon a une grande tradition industrielle, notamment avec la filière aéronautique et aérospatiale. Cette tradition, on va continuer de l'affirmer dans les années qui viennent, avec bien sûr le début du programme Ariane 6, avec les recherches sur le programme Prometheus qui va inventer une nouvelle génération de lanceurs, avec bien sûr la montée en puissance et en charge du campus de l'espace, avec l'ensemble de ces formations, de ces également sous-traitants, de cette filière qui s'organise autour du campus technologique. Cette tradition industrielle, cette histoire industrielle, non seulement on la célèbre avec ce parrainage de ce lanceur Ariane 5, 
On va également continuer de la réaffirmer dans les années qui viennent, puisque le vœu de Vernon reste fondamentalement attaché à l'histoire aéronautique et aérospatiale. Eh bien, And Vernon is sponsoring this flight. You can see their coat of arms up on the fairing, exactly as it was on the first Ariane 1 40 years ago. As I told you, the community of Ariane cities is there to sensitize all citizens, and particularly young people. We have to prepare the future of spacefaring Europe, because uh, that industry requires uh, highly technical professions. Here, as you can see, the weather is fantastic. I'm outside in the fresh air, out on the terrace. And uh, in a few minutes, the viewers will go out onto the terrace to view the launch with their own eyes. But down below me, Josh is inside in the air-conditioned uh, control center. Over to you, Josh. Right here, back in the uh, air-conditioned uh, Jupiter Mission Control, countdown proceeding normally less than nine minutes to go till the liftoff. Countdown, of course, not simply a three, two, one, push a button, blast off. You know it's more complicated than that. As a matter of fact, the professionals here say countdown is the most intense part of the entire launch campaign, which lasts, you might remember, five to six weeks. And this is especially true here in Jupiter with the constant flow of information coming in. Some more of the key players, the Arian Space Program Director, Véronique Loisel there for the two satellites. The customers alongside her, you'll see them in a minute, the satellite mission directors for the two passengers. Every Arian Space customer has one point of contact and only one, the program director, from contract signing all the way through to after the end of the mission, one-stop shop, making things very convenient for them. Here in Jupiter, you can see all the operational teams, but in fact, to launch Ariane or Soyuz or Vega effectively and safely, we need uh, a lot of help from security people, we need help from the Army and the Navy, we need firefighters and a lot of uh, other professions, the same as in uh, any other business. Some of these people arrive early. The first operations for an area and begin 11 hours before, before liftoff, so some of the people back in the fishbowl were here at 5 this morning. Two other people you're going to be seeing on the left of your screen is Thierry Villemart from Ariane Space, the mission director, and with him the range operations manager who's going to call out the seven-minute mark. He's from Kness. He's Pepin Antoine Guillaume. Now, you'll be hearing him a lot because he calls out all the milestones, both before and during the launch. And he's just taken us into the seven-minute mark, which is the automatic or the synchronized sequence, the final moments of the final countdown, the tip of the iceberg. If you want, the computers are taking over. Ariane is being weaned from the ground. Her onboard computers are giving her autonomy. Last thing we want to show you is the green status panels. In the back, all is green. We're ready to go. A film now on the launch campaign. You'll see how Ariane 5 is put together. Take a look. We'll be back. Mon rôle dans la campagne est de planifier et de coordonner avec l'ensemble des équipes opérationnelles toutes les activités d'assemblage et de contrôle du lanceur, d'intégration de la charge utile et de la préparation des installations sol afin que tout soit prêt pour le lancement. La campagne lanceur a démarré le 12 juin au bâtiment d'intégration lanceur. Là se sont déroulées les opérations d'intégration du lanceur et les contrôles pneumatiques et électriques de bon fonctionnement. Le lanceur a ensuite été transféré au bâtiment d'assemblage final le 5 juillet. Bonjour, je suis le chef de mission et j'ai donc en charge la préparation avant la campagne et la coordination pendant la campagne de lancement de toutes les activités déroulées sur le centre spatial en interface avec les satellites. Pour ce lancement, nous accueillons sur le lanceur le satellite Intelsat 39 en position haute et le satellite EDRSC en position basse. Intelsat 39 est arrivé en Guyane le 24 juin et a été transféré au bâtiment S5 avec tous ses équipements de support pour la campagne. Les opérations se sont nominalement déroulées. Le satellite a été contrôlé par les équipes Maxar, rempli en ergol et finalisé avant d'être intégré sur son adaptateur de vol. Le satellite a ensuite été transféré au bâtiment d'assemblage final, positionné sur la structure de lancement double, le SILDA, 
et coiffé. EDRSC, lui, est arrivé en Guyane le 20 juin avec ses équipements de support. Après transfert sur le centre spatial, les opérations de contrôle du satellite ont été parfaitement déroulées au bâtiment S1. Le transfert du satellite au bâtiment de remplissage s'est déroulé avec le CCU3 qui nous permet de garantir pendant le transfert toutes les conditions d'environnement du satellite. Après les remplissages satellites, il a rejoint le bâtiment d'assemblage final et a été hissé sur le lanceur. Nous avons ensuite finalisé la configuration du lanceur en intégrant l'ensemble Intelsat 39, Silda et Coif sur Ariane. Les équipes d'Ariane Group, d'Ariane Espace et les industriels Sol, représentant environ 300 personnes, ont ensuite travaillé intensément pour amener le lanceur et le sol en configuration de lancement. Vendredi dernier, la revue d'aptitude au lancement, après avoir vérifié l'état de préparation du lanceur et des installations sol, nous a autorisé à transférer le lanceur sur son pas de tir. La campagne s'est déroulée dans un esprit toujours constructif et j'en remercie toutes les équipes. Coming to you now from the broadcast booth for the seventh launch of the year for Ariane Space, the third Ariane 5 of 2019. Some 1,700 people are working around the space, space in all, for a launch of Ariane. Our cameras are here in Jupiter, but many others, you can imagine, are hard at work in many other sites across the range. We're going to show you one now, another one later on. This place is very busy, the launch zone. Here the launch management teams are working under the direction of the launch complex operations manager, Philip Harris. You saw him in the video on the launch campaign. The work done up there carried out by two teams, one responsible for executing flight chronology, the other for verification of the flight worthiness of the vehicle itself. The launch complex operations manager heads up the group responsible for execution of the chronology, and he coordinates with Mission Control, that's us here in Jupiter, for final authorization to launch, and when all the conditions are right, and not before, he's the one who then okays the automatic sequence at the seven-minute mark which we saw. You know, all about 100 people up there working on going over, going over the final checks and verifications on all parts of Arian's launch systems. Final countdown, we mentioned, began 5.07 this morning. The onboard computers were turned on at 9.12 and the flight program was loaded. Split screen image here showing the propellant feeder arms in the middle of the launch vehicle. We're going to pull back, you get a better picture in just a second. Liquid hydrogen going in on the left, liquid oxygen on the right. What are they doing? They're putting propellant into the upper stage tanks. And you'll see these arms pull back at seven seconds before ignition. They're hidden just behind the upper stage there along, if you see Isa and Arian on the back of, of the gantry, that's where they are. One of the last things you'll see before liftoff, we'd like to take just a minute to point it out. Under two minutes, the electrical power supply has been switched from the ground to on board. That's one of the last things on the list. So little by little, Ariane 5 is becoming more autonomous and ready to go. And you can see here in Jupiter, the invited guests have begun to make their ways outside to watch the liftoff. Bright daylight today. We haven't seen a daylight launch in, in, in a while. There are two terraces on either side of the building that give a fine view onto the pad. Ariane's trajectory takes her almost right over us here in Jupiter. Yes, a fine Attention view. Pour moins une minute. is going to call at the one minute mark, and we will be into the final 60 seconds. Top, H0, moins une minute. I don't know if you heard that, but the DDO called out one minute mark. Give us a chance to say hello to all of our friends at Intelsat in the U.S., Maxar in the U.S., Airbus Defense and Space, OHB, locally to the French Guiana sites, to our industrial partners, ISA and Kness, and to all of you following on the internet. We hope you're enjoying it. We're going to cut away and let you listen to the DDO as he will call out the final seconds. Watch for the cryogenic arms to open. That sets the ball rolling. Enjoy the liftoff. À tous de DDO, attention pour le décompte final. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, top. À 
Allumage du Vulcan. Allumage du ZRP et décollage. sont normaux, la propulsion est nominale. Faites la manœuvre en roulis. Les paramètres bord sont nominaux. Local time and right on time, Ariane 5 began her mission lifting off from the ground. Here in French Guiana with a lot of fire and with two new satellites rising into the bright blue sky. Wonderful pictures trailing exhaust flames of gold. The two boosters providing 90, that's 90% of our thrust right now, propelling the launcher along her trajectory at an ever higher velocity. 775 tons at liftoff, hard to believe. But to get that sort of mass off the ground, you need a lot of push. And push we have, push you can see there. She's burning five tons of fuel every second. Two and a half tons are burning every second in each of the boosters. Plus the core stage, the middle stage, burning another 300 kilos of fuel every second. Ariane 5 is now following the program in the onboard computer, which gives all the orders, including stage separations. We're going to see those in uh, just about uh, 20 seconds. We're in the first of four flight phases as we pass to the animation. We'll be describing each in turn, so you can follow Ariane on her way east across the Atlantic. Right now, the first flight phase, as you can see on the animation, the single first stage engine and the two boosters are burning. The boosters burn just over two minutes. Nominal, la trajectoire est nominale. Tous les paramètres bord sont normaux. The DDO says Séparation everything is, des EAP. is perfect on board, and he's announced the separation of the boosters, and you can see that. That's the two points of light on the top, the flames of the two boosters flaming out. The single point of light below that is the lower stage, which continues to burn. Fine shots. We may even have shots of the fairing separation coming up in less than a minute. That'll make another two points of light in the bright blue sky. The single first stage in engine is burning now. Taken over from the uh, boosters. The boosters will fall. La propulsion uh, est nominale. La trajectoire est nominale. Tous les paramètres bord sont normaux. DDO says everything is nominal on board. The boosters fall 500 kilometers from shore into a protected area. Look on your screen on the bottom. Our altitude 104 kilometers. On the right, our speed. 2.27 kilometers per second. The speed we need to inject the satellites, roughly eight or nine Separation kilometers like per second as we've separated the fairing. There are actually two halves. There's another half on the uh, starboard side of the vehicle, which is out of camera range. We can separate the fairing now because we're out of the dense layers of the atmosphere. Over 100 kilometers up, there's neither friction nor heating, which could disturb the passengers. We could also, we can also now discard any dead weight to maximize the launcher's performance and the fairing weighs two and a half tons. So we, nominal, tous les paramètres bord sont normaux. so we can get rid of it now. So all is fine on board, coming up on four minutes on, after a liftoff of the 7th Ariane flight of the year. As we look at some of the Ariane space people, we're going to look at... Uh, We'll see Charlotte Besco in a minute and, and Didier Frev from, uh, Knisa, from <laughs> Knes and ISA. The uh, European space effort is a three-way affair among Ariane Space, the European uh, Space Agency, ISA, and uh, Knes, the French Space Agency. You find them all here, along with the customers. Ariane Space in charge of operating the family of launchers and marketing the launch services and the Ariane program. ISA funding new programs. CNES overseeing coordination of all space base operations. The Guiana Space Center is the world's only dedicated commercial space base where Ariane Space operates a launcher family. That's Ariane 5 soon to be Ariane 6. Soyuz and Vega soon to be the updated Vega C. A series of films coming up for you now on the customers. Up first, a look at Intelsat 39.
Hello, I'm pleased to welcome this 395 EC launch of the year with on board two passengers. Entelsat 39 for the operator Entelsat and EDRC based on a public private partnership between the European Space Agency and Airbus. Regarding in particular Entelsat 39 satellite, RNSPAS is proud for having been selected by Entelsat to launch ICE 39, which will be the 61st Entelsat satellite launched by RNSPAS. This high power communication satellite with a mass of 6.6 .6 tons was built by Maxar in Palo Alto and will replace Entelsat 902. It will be located exactly at 62 degrees east orbital position. I would like to thank all the teams that have been involved in this program. First, of course, our customer Entelsat, which always relied on INSPAS with a dedicated, very efficient teamwork all along the program. Constructive approaches and optimizations have always been shared and preferred between the project teams. This was really a key driver to conduct a smooth and efficient launch campaign. I wish a long life to ICE 39. We are in the second powered flight phase, the single engine core stage burning now. You can see that on the animation. Another two minutes to go roughly until it shuts down. In just two seconds, we will be picked up by our first downrange tracking station. That's over the border in Brazil, a place called Natal. The station run by the Brazilian Defense Department for the CNES in an agreement with ESA. It will see lower stage burnout and separation. All of Ariane's trajectory has been designed to be followed from Continuing our look at the passengers tonight, a first look at our second satellite, EDRSC. Welcome all to the European Spaceport for VA249 launch. As the Ein Space Program Director for EDRSC, I am in charge of the customer interface and launch services mission preparation. And I have here the pleasure to present the satellite which will be launched in lower position of this flight. In July 2015, Airbus Defence and Space selected the European launcher for the launch of EDRS satellites. EDRS-C will be the second space segment of the European Data Relay System. It will enable ultra-fast transfer of data from low Earth orbit satellites down to Earth. EDRS-C also hosts HILAS-3, a communications payload for Aventi with flexible capacity over Africa and the Middle East. EDRS-C is a second satellite based on OHB small geo platform with the first one launched in 2017 by Einspace. Over those four years, Einspace and Airbus have built strong links of cooperation and coordination in the frame of the execution of the launch services contract. On behalf of Einspace, I would like to sincerely thank our customers for their trust. The Space Data Highway, you might have heard about it, a public-private partnership between ESA and Airbus Defense and Space, an optical fiber network in the sky. Comprising two geostationary satellites, the first, EDRS-A, was already launched in 2016. EDRS-C, tonight's uh, passenger, also hosting Avanti's Hylus-3 payload. Uh, more on that in a film later on. And there's a third EDRS satellite, D, EDRS-D. It's in the works for the Asia Pacific region. We are coming up on, on cutoff of the lower stage. You see on the animation the nozzle shutting down. And there's the separation of the stage. And you'll see the nozzle on the upper stage light up there. There we are. These three commands given by the onboard computer in about 13 seconds. The lower stage will fall into the Atlantic off the Gulf of Guinea. You remember our mass at liftoff, 775 tons. Well, we're down now after separation of the first stage and all the fuel gone. Total mass, 30, 30 tons. We're into the third and final powered flight phase, the single upper stage engine that will burn until plus 25, 32 seconds, 16 minutes roughly in all. The job of the upper stage, it takes the satellites to their injection point, it positions them for separation and then releases them. That is its propulsion role, but she also has a second role. And that comes during Ariane Space's Ariane 5's ballistics phase after the power phase, which comes later in the flight. And we'll have more on that coming up. But for now, another film on our first passenger, Intelsat 39. You'll be hearing from their CEO, Stephen Spengler. Hello, everyone. 
Thank you for joining us to watch the launch of Intelsat 39. Launching a new satellite is always an exciting time. It brings the promise of new opportunities to connect individuals, businesses, and communities using the latest advancements in satellite technology. It also reinforces the teamwork and technical innovation evident in our partnerships across the industry. Intelsat 39 will replace Intelsat 902 at 62 degrees east. This new satellite exemplifies the diversity of services that Intelsat's space-based platform and Intelsat 1 terrestrial network provides our customers around the world. Intelsat 39 is designed with both wide beam and high powered steerable spot beams to meet the needs of broadband networking, video, and government customers across Africa, Asia, Europe and the Middle East. The steerable spot beams provide flexibility within the payload and enable our customers to efficiently respond as their requirements shift over time. The satellite will feature C and KU band capabilities to provide additional scale to our Intelsat Flex managed services. It will enhance mobile connectivity for aeronautical, maritime, enterprise and government customers operating across these geographies. Intelsat 39 is a powerful platform that will enable our customers to expand their high-speed networks at a lower cost of ownership. It will provide governments and mobile operators with the infrastructure they need to reach remote areas across the region, supporting our mission to narrow the digital divide. The government of Myanmar will use Intelsat 39 to enhance its network and the networks of other mobile operators and media companies. Affordable 3G, 4G broadband and internet connectivity will extend throughout the country. None of these benefits will be possible without dedicated partners who share our commitment to building a more connected world. On behalf of Intelsat's employees, I would like to thank our manufacturer Maxar and our launcher Ariana Space for their commitment to deliver a successful program for Intelsat. I'd also like to recognize the Intelsat team around the world for their work on Intelsat 39. Thanks to each of you for your technical expertise, dedication, and commitment to excellence. Your efforts are greatly appreciated. Finally, let me express my sincere appreciation to our customers for their continued trust in Intelsat. We value our partnership and look forward to advancing your strategic initiatives and continued growth. Now I'd like to wish us all a successful mission. Go Intelsat 39. At the top of the broadcast, Luce Fabregat mentioning that uh, Intelsat was an old uh, friend. Our first uh, mission with Intelsat back in 1983, that was on Flight 7, one of the promotional fi flights for the Ariane 1. And it weighed 1.8 tons. So you compare that to 6.6 .6 tons today. As of June, Ariane Space has launched 60 6 satellites for Intelsat and signed 58 launch contracts with the operator. Our last Intelsat launch was last September. That was Azure Space Intelsat 38. It was flight 243, weighed three and a half tons. Also, the 100th Ariane 5 mission. And there's one more Intelsat remaining in the order book. It's coming up in 2020. Another look now for more on Intelsat 39, and this time it's prime contractor, Maxar. Intelsat 39, the satellite that we're launching today, is going to replace a satellite Intelsat 902 that was built by Maxar and was launched here in French Guiana in 2001. And that satellite was contracted for a lifetime of 13 years, so we're coming up on 18 years, so it's giving us close to 50% more life than we contracted for, so we're happy with that. I've been involved with about 15 satellites. I've really got to know the teams here at Maxar and appreciate their professionalism and their technical know-how. I think Maxar is a world-class company. When it comes to building communication satellites, they are one of the best.
while you were watching that film, we were picked up by our next downrange tracking station. That's Ascension Island, tiny island in the South Atlantic, 10 square kilometers. NASA had a station there till 1989 when they closed it. ESA, the European Space Agency, decided to build its own. This is the 65th Maxar satellite to be launched by Arian Space and the 57th based on their 1300 platform. Our last Arian launch, June 20th, orbited a Maxar satellite that was UTELSAT 7C. And there are currently four more Maxar satellites in Arian Space's backlog for upcoming missions. Roughly 10 minutes to go in the upper stage burn. You may have heard that Europe is developing the successor to Ariane 5, Ariane 6, a more market-driven vehicle to meet customer needs and market changes, including electrical propulsion. Ariane 6 will, they tell us, have shorter and more streamlined launch campaigns. There are eight Ariane 6s already in the Ariane Space Backlog, first launch 2021. Another look at EDRSC coming up for you now. Europe spaceport in Kourou, the new EDRSC satellite is undergoing final preparations before its launch. An Ariane 5 will lift the satellite into geostationary orbit, where it will join EDRSA, which was launched in 2016 as a hosted payload on UTELSAT 9B as part of the European Data Relay System. The European Data Relay System is a collaboration between ESA and Airbus Defence and Space aiming to improve and accelerate data transmission from low Earth orbiting satellites to the ground. From their geostationary orbit, EDRS satellites can both see the low orbiting imaging satellite as well as the ground stations. Data from the imaging satellite is sent via a laser link to EDRS, which then transmits data via radio frequency to the ground stations. This process allows for longer and faster data transfers, creating the Space Data Highway. EDRS is called the Space Data Highway because it's likened to an optical fiber in the sky. It's a highway through which data travels at enormous speeds, in the case of EDRS at up to 1.8 gigabits per second. And if you compare this to a conventional internet connection at home, you can say that it's about 100 times the speed that you get with your internet connection when you surf at home. So that's a real highway for data in space. The main features of EDRS are a high transfer rate achieved by the use of laser technology and a near permanent availability, a result of the satellite's bird's eye view from geostationary orbit. This results in a quasi real time availability of the data on the ground, a step forward from conventional systems that only allow data transfers for 10 out of every 90 minutes. EDRS is the first commercial system in the world to use optical communication between satellites. While the system has been jointly developed by ESA and Airbus, it is the latter who will operate the service. The launch of today's EDRSC satellite is a fantastic opportunity for enhancing our space data highway system. With Space Data Highway, Airbus is the first connectivity operator of laser communication services. Already today, Space Data Highway links all the four Copernicus satellites near real-time to the Earth, and it will allow, with the second satellite, to have near real-time data of two Earth observation satellites at the same time. A fantastic innovation. Also, it will be, of course, a backup of the first satellite, in case we have a problem. EDRSC is the first dedicated EDRS satellite. It will provide additional capacity to the European Data Relay System, but also improve its robustness and further increase coverage. Once both nodes are fully operational, EDRS will be able to relay at least 50 terabytes of data every day. Today, ESA and Airbus are already working on a third node, EDRS-D, which will be positioned over the Asia-Pacific region and mark another step towards worldwide use of this breakthrough technology. The ultimate goal will, of course, be to achieve global coverage so that we can transmit imagery that is taken anywhere in the world to Europe within quasi real time, meaning almost immediately. And there is a great future in using EDRS with our new Pleiad Neo satellites, 30 centimeter resolution coming soon 
from 2021 onwards, we will be providing you with more high-resolution, near real-time data for Earth observation applications, and I'm very proud of that. With higher resolutions and better imaging techniques, the amount of data provided by low-Earth orbiting satellites will only increase further in years to come. Therefore, both ESA and Airbus are convinced that optical communication in space is a key technology, allowing us to fully exploit these vast amounts of data. EDRS is the beginning of a new era in space-based telecommunications, and the launch of EDRS-C is another step towards the completion of the space data highway. So EDRS adding lasers to space. Big improvement. That's the future. During the film, we were picked up by our next downrange station in Libreville, Gabon, on the west coast of Africa. It has run, been run by CNES for over 30 years and covered by an agreement between the European Space Agency and the Gabonese government. Tonight, a standard double launch to communication satellites, but throughout the long history of the Ariane family and Soyuz and Vega, Ariane space has launched for all types of missions and all types of orbits. On EDRS, a payload called Hylas 3, a short look now at its builder, Avanti. continues to say that all is perfect on board, everything happening just the way it is planned to happen. Some numbers, right, some numbers. This is the 72nd launch of this version of the Ariane 5, the 312th mission performed by the Ariane family of launchers, and the 105th on Ariane 5. Until Sat 39 and EDRSC are the 215th and 16th Satellites to be launched by an Ariane 5, both with a lifetime of 15 years. Up next, a look at EDRSC's prime contractor, OH OHB. de la télémesure lanceur par la station de Malindi au Kenya. EDRS will be the 26th satellite launched by Ariane Space, based on an OHB platform. Currently seven OHB satellites in Ariane Space's backlog, four more in the Galileo fleet, the H2SAT, the 
Heinrich Hertz Communication Satellite for Germany, and two MTG Meteosat third generation satellites for the Meteo UMetsat uh, weather group. During that film, we were picked up by our last downrange tracking station in Malindi, Kenya. It will see upper stage burnout and satellite separation. About uh, 15 seconds left to go until the extinction of the upper stage engine. And we'll hear the DDO call out that milestone. We'll be out of the powered flight phases and into what they call the ballistics phase or the coastings phase or the free flight phase. You see the nozzle shutting down there. DDO will confirm cutoff of the upper stage engine occurring at about 675 altitude. Our mass now down to 15 and a half tons from 775. Ariane has reached her maximum speed, which you can see on the lower right, 9.3 kilometers per second. And you'll see her begin to slow down when she separates Intelsat 39 in about three minutes. Her speed will be 8.8 .8 kilometers per second. When she releases the SILDA, that's the carrying structure for the second passenger, at plus 31 minutes, she'll be flying at 8.59 kilometers per second. And when she separates EDRSC at plus 33.31, plus 33.30, I think it should be, her speed will be down to 8.2 kilometers per second. With the power shut down, we're going to go to our next film, a look at Intelsat's first maneuvers after separation. We'll be back with more. Good evening. I'm Mohinder Guru, Senior Program Manager at Intelsat. And I'm pleased to be back in Kourou for my second launch campaign as the spacecraft mission director within space of 10 months, this time on th Intelsat 39. After separation from the Arium 5, our mission team at the Long Beach Control Center will take charge of the satellite and will start commanding. First, deploying the solar arrays, followed by four Apogee motor burns to, and deploying all appendages and seven days of electric orbit raising using xenon thrusters to position the satellite to its initial IoT longitude of 55.3 degrees east. After completion all bus testing and phase one of payload testing, Intelsat 39 will be maneuvered to its final operational longitude of 62 degrees east, where phase two of the payload testing will be performed with the goal of entering Intelsat 39 into service by October 2019. I would like to sincerely thank everyone at Arian Space, CSG, and Maxar Space Solutions involved in this endeavor. So go Intelsat 39. We're a minute away from separation of Intelsat 39. There's a team there as we near confirmation of the DDO on separation of our upper passenger, due in about a minute. Intelsat, of course, going back a long way in the history of space flight, all the way back to Early Bird, if you recall, 1965, which was Intelsat 1, one of the world's first commercial communications satellites. So they've done this before. And yet it's always a moment of high concentration, no matter how much experience you have. The teams have gone through these procedures before many, many times, but it does call for tremendous focus. You don't want to use the word tense, but I guess focused, concentrated, gives you an idea. All eyes on the computer screens, all ears on the phones, awaiting confirmation of our satellite separation, Intelsat 39. Roughly about uh, 10 seconds, that's Intelsat 39. On the right of the screen, below that is the black bell-shaped structure, is the SILDA, that's the carrying structure, holding the second satellite. There's the scheduled separation. We're waiting for the DDO's confirmation. Separation du satellite Intelsat 39. And there we are, the first good news. As the men from Intelsat are nodding and pleased, you see they're holding, very politely holding their applause because the mission, of course, is not over yet. We still have to separate our final passenger, EDRS-C. Intelsat 39 separated with a transversal spin. We promised you to show we promised you to show another place where people are hard at work tonight. I'm going to go up there now. When choosing 
a space base the Europeans wanted nearby hills where they could install radar de la and telemetry. Au profit du Silda. And this is the CVI, called the Quick Look Telemetry Display Control Center. It's on a hill just behind uh, here, us here in Jupiter. These teams have all the means for receiving and processing, storing and analyzing all the data coming in from the ground stations along Ariane's flight path. The downrange tracking stations follow the launcher, and right now these teams are following all the key flight data coming in by radar and telemetry to this post here. And they report the flight status, they report all that data on the launcher back to the teams here in Jupiter. And the announcements you hear made by the DDO come from the CVI. The information going to them first, and then relaying it here, also to the flight disk, of course, and to the launch complex operations manager. All part of the great information flow from points across the space space back to Jupiter. Coming up on SILDA separation. You'll see that. SILDA will be pushed away from the mothership, just like the, the satellites were. And there you are. There's the scheduled separation of the SILDA. Separation du système de lancement double Ariane, le SILDA. And the DDO has confirmed it. Intelsat uh, 39 signal will be acquired. The first signal will be acquired by its station in Australia. Going to another film on the Super Data Highway. Let me now introduce to you the head of EDRS infrastructure at Airbus, Mr. Matthias Wiggins. Good afternoon, Matthias. Matthias, could you explain what is the main mission of EDRS? Our launching customer is the European Commission's Copernicus Earth Observation Program. The data relay service to the Sentinel-1 and Sentinel-2 satellites allow the delivery of large volumes of time-critical data to Earth monitoring centers within Europe in near real time. Before EDS, a process that would typically take several hours. EDS will be the second communication node followed by a third satellite over the Asia-Pacific region by around 2024. Equipped with three laser terminals, EDSD will again significantly increase the communication capacity and its coverage. Thank you, Matthias. Let me now introduce to you the EDRS project manager at ESA, Mr. Michael Witting. Michael, since when has the EDRS service been available and how will EDRSC contribute? The commercial EDRS service has been available since November 2016 via EDRSC's sister payload EDRSA. By the end of 2019, the system will also provide a fully European broadband communication service to the Columbus module of the International Space Station. From 2021, the Pleiad Neo Earth Observation satellites will begin to use the Space Data Highway. Coming up in less than 30 seconds on separation of our final passenger, EDRSC, as we look at the teams. Again, a moment of high concentration for them. They've gone through all these procedures before, just like the Intelsat people, did. but again, the waiting, same waiting, same suspense, this time for the second passenger. Tonight, remember, we're representing years of work for many of these people. Separation du satellite EDRSC. Well, the final good news, as you can hear. The applause from the people here in Jupiter. Everybody happy. Arian 5 delivered her second passenger, EDRSC, out over the Indian Ocean. Handshake smiles, cigars and champagne forthcoming. So from those very concentrated minutes, just moments ago, you can see the change here in Jupiter. Very buoyant, very happy the hugs and the kisses all across the Space Center and at the points and posts where people are following the launcher and the satellite. Work will be just beginning there at the different ground stations for both Intelsat 39 and EDRSC and at the other sites around the world where the satellite's first maneuvers are being monitored. Congratulations all around. EDRSC separated via a longitudinal spin different from the Intelsat 39, which was separated with transversal spin. Just wanted to note that. We're waiting, of course, now for the traditional post 
separation speeches. The podium <laughs> in Jupiter being set up for our speakers, who will include Luce Fabregat, they're in space. <clears throat> I believe John Harborn of Intelsat, Grant Gould from Maxar. We're going to go to a launch replay while we're reciting these names. You can relive those exciting moments half an hour ago. As Ariane 5 took off from French Guiana here. Grant Gould from Maxar, we said. <laughs> Richard Franklin of Airbus Defense and Space will also be speaking. As will Scott Richardson of Avanti Communication. And Guy Perez, that's E Perez, I apologize, of OHP. These shots from all the replay, from all, from the replays at all the observation posts at the base, there are six or seven observation sites from differing views, including view from the beach, which is very popular here with the locals. Wonderful shots of Arian rising up into the late afternoon sky. Luce Fabregate is making her way to the podium. I can see she will be first to speak. And the next voice you hear will be Luce Fabregate of Ariane Space. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, Ariane Space is delighted to announce that Intelsat 39 and EDRST have been separated as planned on the targeted geostationary transfer orbit. For the third Ion 5 launch of this year, our heavyweight vehicle has once more performed flawlessly. Congratulations to all of you. Well done, Ion 5. Let me first thank our customer, Intelsat. 36 years after Intelsat 5 F7, this 61st mission together is a new bright success. So let me thank Mr. John Arborn, who's coming out from, <laughs> from behind, the senior manager of uh, Intelsat Spacecraft, Spacecraft Program Office, who is with us this afternoon. Thanks, John. Thank you. Thank you for your trust. And for this successful delivery of the satellite, I also want to congratulate our US partner, Maxa, and notably Mr. Grant Gould, also behind me, the spacecraft program manager who is here with us today. Intelsat 39 marks the 57th satellite based on a Maxar 1300 platform that Ion Space has flown. Thanks for this partnership. Now, let me also express my deepest gratitude to our second customer and partner today, Airbus. On this day, we celebrate the 132nd successful mission together since Marex A flew aboard the fourth launch of Ariane that was in 1991. What a journey, and here's to incredible partnership. Let me express my warmest thanks to you, Richard, to Richard Franklin, head of secure communications for sharing this moment uh, here with us. Our journey does not stop here, as Airbus have, has entrusted 21 more of its birds on our launchers, and notably on Ion 6 and Vega C. So we are looking forward to welcome you again here and uh, for all these flights. I also want to extend my congratulations to OHB, the manufacturer of this satellite, and to Guy Perez, the CTO and head of telecom satellites at OHB, here at CSG today. Thank you. Thank you, Guy. EDRC marks the 26 spacecraft based on an OHB platform launched by Ion Space. Thanks for this partnership. If you allow me, let me also express my deepest gratitude to another key teammate, Isa, and especially I would like to thank you, Herman Muller, for being uh, with us uh, today. And if you allow me, I, I would also 
say a, a, a big up, a, a huge big up to uh, Magali Vesquier, uh, director of uh, TIA, Telecommunication and Integrated uh, Applications at, uh, at ESA. So big up to, to you, Chapoba, Magali, and, uh, and uh, big uh, uh, congratulations to, to the whole team at uh, TIA. The agency partnered with Airbus in a PPP for EDRSC and the Space Data Highway Program. Hence, by orbiting EDRST with very positive outcomes for society, Ion Space once again ensures its first mission, that is European independent access to space. I also take this moment to extend my warmest thanks to uh, Mr. Klaus Lippert, head of launcher department at DLR, for sharing this success with us here in, uh, in Kourou. And finally, I also want to thank another private partner of ESA that was aboard the flight today, Avanti. Ida 3 is a hosted payload on EDRSC and already the fourth payload we fly for, for you, Avanti. Thanks. Thanks for being here, Scott. Uh, with this third Ion 5 of the year orbit, orbiting our fifth and sixth geo satellites, our heavyweight launcher reasserts its leading position on the geo market. Indeed, the A2-249 marks the 377th and 378th satellite, geosatellites orbited by Iron Space. So let me now congratulate all our partners who played their part in this success. Once again, ESA on the launch, on the launcher side also, ESA and all the member states of the Ion program, whose support is essential for us. Thanks to the prime contractor of today, Ion Group, of course, and the first shareholder of Ion Space. Well done with Ion 5. Thanks to CNES, Ion 5 Design Authority, and our daily partner here in CSG. And thanks to all our contractors in French Guiana and all employees here at the launch facility. And of course, let me pay tribute to my Ion Space colleagues for this new success. I would now like to welcome to the stage our customers and partners. Please. Good afternoon, distinguished guests and colleagues. Thank you all for being here today and congratulations to all on the successful mission. Ariane Espace is known for delivering and today did not disappoint. We are very appreciative for another flawless mission marking the 20th Intelsat satellite that has been launched on the Ariane 5. I'd also like to recognize our manufacturing partner, Maxar. They have been a trusted and reliable manufacturing partner for Intelsat and I'd like to thank them for their hard work, dedication, and strong track record of delivering satellites on time. Having the industry's most trusted leading experts at our side is critical, as our customers rely on us to provide broadband connectivity to support the businesses and communities they serve. Intelsat 39, designed with both C and KU band, wide beam and high powered steerable spots, will provide broadband networking, video, mobility, and government services to customers across Africa, Asia, Europe, and the Middle East. Intelsat 39 will also enable mobile network operators, enterprises, and internet service providers to expand their networks at higher speeds and a lower total cost of ownership. It will provide governments with the necessary infrastructure to reach remote areas across the region, supporting our mission to narrow the digital divide. I'd like to thank our customers for entrusting Intelsat's global space-based and Intelsat-1 terrestrial infrastructure to help them achieve their business and growth objectives. We are grateful that Paul Eckberg of Alzon could be here with us today to celebrate the launch. Combining the power, flexibility, and resiliency of Intelsat 39 with Ofzon's managed service and ultra-small laptop-sized terminals, 
we will be able to provide up to five times the throughput capability to teams conducting disaster response operations and delivering mission critical information at the tactical edge. We truly value our partnership and look forward to our continued success together. Again, I'd like to congratulate and thank everyone here today for another launch success. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm uh, Grant Gould, Maxar Space Solutions out of Palo Alto, California. I'm a member of our launch vehicle team. Wow, that was some launch. I hope everyone here at Jupiter enjoyed watching that. I know I sure did from the console. It's a perfect way to end the launch campaign. John, thank you for the kind words directed towards Maxar. It was our pleasure to deliver for you the highly capable, flexible InnoSat 39 spacecraft, which happens to be replacing another Maxar spacecraft, which we launched here in uh, 18 years ago on an Ariane 44L. It's always fun uh, working with you, and we look forward to future collaborations together. And I also want to congratulate our EDS uh, co-passenger today, the OHB, uh, Airbus, ESA team, and Avanti, who had the uh, Hylus 3 uh, co-hosted payload on board, provided by uh, Maxar's sister division, MD Ape in Canada. So congratulations to our friends and colleagues up in Canada as well. I'd really be remiss if I didn't give a quick shout out to the Maxar NLSAT 39 launch team, the best in the business. Thanks, team, for another great campaign. And uh, Ariane's boss, thank you. Another successful ride to orbit, coming just six weeks after our last ride to orbit on VA-248. We had our first all-electric platform on that launch. It's doing quite well on its way to its final geo-orbit location. So uh, Maxar will be leaving the launch base soon, but we won't be gone for long. We'll be back later this year for a, an exciting small set mission on Vega. Uh, hopefully later this year, and we'll be back in 2020 with two delivery on orbit spacecraft, where Maxar is both the satellite manufacturer and the Ariane Spas customer. So till then, best wishes. And uh, I'm part of the operational team. We have a tradition here of drinking champagne after the uh, launch, and that's where I'm going to go now. So thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, um, Richard Franklin from Airbus. Um, it's an honor for me to be here to celebrate this success with you, the launch of our second EDRS satellite. And as Grant just said, wow, this is my first launch. It's truly amazing. I'm going to be back for more. Um, EDRSC is key to the ongoing development of our laser program, the Space Digital Highway, and towards a fully redundant global network. Airbus is very proud to be the lead in the consortia the prime, and to deliver the service to the benefit of our customers. I would like to specifically thank ESA, our partner, and this program is only possible due to our continuous and strong support from them along this long program. The same applies to the German Aerospace Center. Only your long-standing efforts made laser communications possible. Furthermore, I'd like to thank the European Commission for the Copernicus program and being our anchor tenant on the EDRS program. I'd also like to thank Ariana Spass, CNS, and the Guyana Space Center for the successful launch, but also being such tremendous hosts. Really impressive and great, great fun today. The launch tonight comes after many years of intense work from a number of teams, the Airbus team, the OHB team, the TSAT team. It's taken a lot of work and a great deal of teamwork together, and the success tonight, I think, is testament to all the efforts that teams have put in. Of course, it doesn't stop here. Our teams in Europe are already working on the first in-operation testing. This phase will continue for several months, and we can now officially start the service that will last for the next 15 years. So special thanks also go to the German Space Operations Center and the GSOC, which was responsible for the payload operations. By now, the first telemetry should have been picked up, and testing should be underway. Laser communications is now firmly established. With EDRS-A, we've already done 23,000 successful links. EDRS-C takes us to that next level, adding extra capability to the backbone and proving 
that we are capable of doing missions that conventional satellites were not capable of doing before, enabling capability, saving money, and looking to the future. We're already focused on the next one, looking at EDRS Global. Hopefully, in the next few years, we'll be back for another launch. But now, just all to say thank you for everyone coming, and then please enjoy the success that we've all had tonight. Thank you. Monsieur Dam, ladies and gentlemen, permettez-moi je vais faire mon discours en français et en anglais. And only a few words left between now and cocktail time, so I will be quick. Au nom d'Avanti, je voudrais remercier Ariane Spass pour le quatrième lancement réussi, ainsi que tous les autres partenaires de la mission, les A, Airbus, OHP, et plus particulièrement MDA, qui ont construit la charge utile. On behalf of Avanti, I would like to thank Ariane Spass for our fourth successful launch together and all other mission partners, ESA, Airbus, OHB, and especially MDA, who built the payload. Depuis 2002, cela a été tout un voyage d'une boîte bleue à notre propre flotte, à laquelle Ilas 3 est désormais un ajout très bienvenu. Since 2002, it has been quite a journey from a blue box, and there will be some people that know what I'm talking about, through lease capacity on Intelsat 903 to our very own fleet, to which Hylas 3 is now a very welcome addition. I would also like to congratulate Intelsat and their partners and wish them every success. Je voudrais également féliciter Antelsat et ses partenaires et le souhaiter plein succès. En conclusion, Avanti compte maintenant sur un partenariat opérationnel fructueux avec Airbus tout au long de la mission, afin que nous puissions connecter les gens, les communautés et les continents à des nouvelles opportunités. In closing, Avanti now looks forward to a successful operational partnership with Airbus throughout the lifetime of the mission, so that we may connect people, communities, and continents to new opportunity, so that people can be more. Merci de votre attention, et thank you for listening. So, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Guy Perez. I'm the CTO of OHP System. At first, I would like to say uh, how wonderful was this launch. We could even observe the uh, separation of the boosters under clear skies, blue sky conditions. And I, I should say that this is really a privilege of uh, having attended such a launch in uh, these very good conditions. Uh, I was there several times personally under uh, different conditions and must say that this one was really exceptional. I would like to thank very much Ian Espas and uh, Luz Fabriquet in particular for the very good uh, work of their teams. So uh, basically OHB is proud of contributing to the uh, European Space Data Highway uh, with its first fully dedicated spacecraft EDRSC that was entirely designed, built, developed, and tested by OHB system. So we are very proud of that. Uh, ESA and Airbus gave us the opportunity to build and launch the second small geo uh, spacecraft. The first, by the way, has been, been launched by Ariane Espace using a Soyuz launch vehicle two years ago which was, by the way, a full success with a very accurate 
injection into GTO for the first time. It was the first time that a Freeton satellite uh, was reaching GTO, and we are proud also of uh, having contributing to that, uh, to that first. Further GEO satellites drawing on the two small GEO satellites are already in our pipeline, MTG, H2SAT, but also Electra. Most of them will be launched also on Ariane 5 or Ariane 6 uh, in the future, so we are planning for these events as, as well. As was said before, I'd like to be there at that time as well. Uh, our engineering teams did a great job in fully, fulfilling basically two uh, main goals. The first one was to adapt the platform, uh, the small geo platform, to these very demanding uh, mission requirements, basically about having a very uh, accurate uh, and, uh, attitude knowledge and also a very uh, stable pointing of the spacecraft. And second, to accommodate the uh, ILAS-3 payload, which was uh, basically given as a CFI by, uh, by ESA. So um, I would not deviate uh, at the end of my speech from uh, the series of big thanks. So big thanks first to the OGB team and uh, who basically uh, managed to uh, uh, bring this project to success under a multi-customer context uh, with different uh, Airbus teams from Friedrichshafen, from uh, Otto Brun, but also uh, two indirect, very important customers for us, ISA first and also Avanti. Yeah? So that's, uh, that, that was really a challenge from our teams and they did it very well. I'd like to also associate uh, the thanks to our main subcontractors, basically TZAT, Avio, OHB Sweden and Luxpace. They did amongst others, the supplier da database uh, from our OHB is very wide, very big. All the European countries are part of the uh, industrial uh, uh, collaboration to build this uh, spacecraft. And uh, of course, uh, I would not avoid in the thanks the teams from Ariane Space again and CNES. They did an excellent job, which for us is not a surprise, again, in uh, providing uh, any element to make uh, this uh, launch campaign very successful. The uh, customers as well, I would not, of course, forget our customer, very demanding customer, Airbus DS, but we appreciate it to be challenged, uh, I should say, by these teams. It was quite a pleasure to uh, address the requirements and the requests from uh, your teams. Uh, and the same for ESA and Avanti, We'd like to thank Isa in particular for the trust that you have put in OHB capabilities, which we are going to demo continue to demonstrate within the LEOP. And last, not, by, not, uh, by, not least, I would not uh, as well um, forget to thank very much all the member states, Isa member states, who contributed, in particular Germany, who contributed very much to the uh, advent of that mission. Without their huge financial contribution, there would not be uh, today such a wonderful mission that uh, OHB was very proud to, uh, to take. Thank you very much to all of you. So again, congratulations to all the teams for this outstanding success. Long life to uh, EDRSC and to Intelsat 39. We had a busy first half of the year. So we will be back in a few weeks. And in the meantime, I would like to wish you all the best summer. Thank you for your attention and enjoy the end of the day or the evening of the night. Thank you. The sun has started to go down, but it's still high in the sky, lighting up the launch pad where Ariane 5 took off on her mission about an hour ago. Everybody very happy here at uh, the Space Center, and rightly so, Ariane 5, third launch of the year, successfully delivering 
another double international launch, ATLSAT 39 and EDRS C. Arian Space Corps is very happy to continue providing service for these customers, proving once again its ability to offer satellite solutions for commercial as well as institutional needs. It's been an exciting evening. We'll be glad you could share with us. Was it exciting for you? Yeah, it was. C'était très excitant, c'était formidable. Très belle Exciting. We had fantastic images at the beginning of the flight, but as usual, Joss, as we say, the you English speakers have already said everything, uh, the most important things. But I just wanted to say to you, I think that the Californians were not, af I thought that Californians were not afraid of the sun, but you're the one who's wearing the sunglasses here. So here we had a wonderful afternoon here at the CSG, and we hope to see you again soon at, C at the CSG, the Europe's spaceport. Have a wonderful afternoon and see you soon. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Please, so we'll say goodbye from Kourou over some lovely pictures of the liftoff, which you can again uh, relive, we'll say, say goodbye. Any last words? Eh bien, je souhaite à tout le monde le... So all the best to everyone, and see you uh, again at the CSG very quickly. Goodbye. See you soon.